Move on to that individual time trial. Not long in kilometres, is it? Just under 30 kilometres, about 19 miles. But look at that, steadily uphill until it bites you to death as you make your way up to the top of the Sierra Nevada. This is going to be a big turning point of the tour, or is it? Is Roberto Hedas going to consolidate now his position as the overall leader of this race? Well, he does have the advantage of starting last, but it's a very long individual time trial. This uh, 18 miles or 30 kilometers of racing, climbing right up to the summit. Uh, to start of interest, uh, one man didn't start the individual time trial this morning. Uh, the super fast Alejandro uh, Alessandro Pataki, I should say. He's not Spanish, uh, but uh, I presume <laughs> that's because of the fact that we're facing up to a very difficult next few days. Nothing more for him except the last stage, and he hasn't wanted the pain of the mountains, which remain now. This is Isidro Nozal, who can turn in a very good mountain time trial, but remember, he lost at the Bantos last year, his overall lead in this race to Roberto Heras. All cheers for him, though. He still nurses a very high overall position, as indeed does Alessandro Valverde. He needs to produce something very special today, and I'm just not sure he's got it. Well, he's had a very difficult day. You can see he's still got bandages on his left knee, and, of course, he's uh, cut up his left arm quite badly as well. Roberto Heras should be the man. To, there's a bit of a problem here. And he's just indicating to his back wheel and he's going to pull off. I'm not sure what the problem was. It doesn't look like he's got a flat tire, but he's going to change machines. But they do take bikes, whatever the problem. That's a much faster way to get the job done. And that was a good change. So he's probably conceded seven, eight seconds there for the bike change. Let's have a look at some times. This is Eladio Jimenez. He's had his stage win coming through here. To the top now. It looks like he might land a fifth finish. The best time has been done, and we didn't see him come in. Uh, Alexander Vinukarov, one of the survivors of T-Mobile. Oh, oh, ouch. Ah, this is not good. Floyd Landis, uh, he's looking at a 23rd finished finish time at the moment at 13 and a half kilometers. The fastest man at this point was Santi Perez. Now, that is rather interesting. That's the winner of yesterday's stage. Obviously, on complete and utter form after getting himself that win. But Floyd Landis there, Phil, going through two minutes, 45 seconds in arrears. He is certainly, I don't think, going to be in the top ten tonight. I'm, I'm beginning to question whether you'll see Madrid now. Never mind the end of this mountain time trial. I think his race has been running all on the sea. And what a wonderful race he's had, let's face it. But look at that surprise again. Santiago Perez, there's me saying he might lose time today, setting the best time at the moment, 30 minutes for 13 and a half kilometers. 26, 27 kilometers an hour. That is incredibly quick up this mountain. It certainly is. It's a horrendous mountain. It's never ending. It goes on right the way up to the top. In fact, this is the highest road in Europe when it gets up to the summit, but it's a dead end, unfortunately. The only way off the mountain is to turn around and go straight the way back down. Garcia, who rode well yesterday, third place there, but this is Valverde just holding second, so Garcia's done well as uh, he goes through in second place, so maybe he is up for it today. That is a very good ride. He's only five seconds off the pace at that point. Uh, yeah. By the way, at the top of this mountain, uh, a very good Kelme rider lives, the uh, name of Francisco Cabello, and he lived up here because he wanted to live at altitude. It's a little bit boring, though, because there's not that many roads to use. There's only one circuit around the top of the mountain. But in the recent years, in fact, before the Olympic Games this year, a number of riders came here and used the Sierra Nevada as an altitude training center. This is Mancebo coming up. Uh, Perez still holding at 13 and a half best time. He's gone through with fourth best time. That's good. This is severe finishing. Oscar was a superstar projected, but he hasn't really come through this last couple of years. 13th place at the minute. He can go a little bit below that now. There's the bear, by the way. Still in the listing, number 13 there. Vinukurov is still best time. He's not going to be challenged here. One hour five for 19 miles. That gives you some idea just how tough this climb is. It certainly does. And um, this is the yellow jersey, Roberto Heras. And in fact, this is not a great time by him. And that's a bit of a surprise to me because maybe the gradient is not to his advantage because he is much easier on the slightly steeper climbs. That's where he has the advantage over all of the other climbers. And uh, he's gone through there in third place at 13 and a half kilometers, 22 seconds off the time of Santi Perez. A bit of a worry, that, as far as uh, Heras is concerned, because Santiago Perez is beginning to make his presence felt here. Aitor Gonzalez coming up for an eighth place holding at the moment. 1-7 at 52. 
but two minutes 17 behind Vinukurov. So I think, Paul, that that's not going to be a good ride when the day's done. It certainly isn't going to be a good ride. Let's just have a look at the 20 kilometre point, and Santi Perez has just recorded the fastest time there 42 minutes and one second. But look at the time gap back to Garcia, a minute and 52 seconds. And even to Pipoli, who is a very good climber, he is at 217. But Vinokurov, who's in with best time, at that point concerning conceiving two minutes to Santiago Perez. That all's well for Perez, if he doesn't blow, of course, because it's the latter half of the climb which is the hardest. On the 7%, improving to 6% gradient here for Francisco Mancebo who is being shouted all the way along at the 12 kilometres to go point, still seven miles to go. Well, trying to find his rhythm a little bit further back. This is a good ride here by Alejandro Valverde. He's actually catching Isidro Nozal, who started two minutes in front of him. So Nozal here this afternoon is not having a very good day, and it's really not all that surprising, Phil, because of the amount of work he's had to do over the last four or five days. Yes, he's held a good overall position, but he's had to hold it and just hope he'd stay there while he works for Roberto Heras, because that's the object of the team, is to try and keep Heras now in the golden jersey. So I know Isidro won't be feeling too happy being passed by Valverde, but that's the way it goes. Still Perez, best time at 42.01, though. But Valverde is in second place at the 20-kilometre mark. They're just 27 seconds adrift. This is Stefano Garzelli. He comes in with the eighth-best time, but just look at that average speed, 26 kilometres an hour. That's around about 16 miles an hour. I have to say that uh, that was a ride of good class there from Garzelli because I don't think he's on form, but he is a good bike rider and he's kept himself up amongst the leaderboard. Lots of cheers here, though, for Alessandro Valverde. This is Mancebo. These are the boys we've been talking about. Once the road tilts up, they are the ones that project themselves. It's become a pretty dour battle, this, between the top Spanish riders. And there might be a new one getting in on the scene, too. Santiago Perez, all of a sudden, seems to be a different bike rider from the years gone by. Well, he certainly does, but look at the time gaps over riders like Francisco Mancebo, almost two minutes at the 20-kilometer point. This is David Blanco coming up here. This is a very good time. He's actually going to push Vinokurov quite close. A minute, six and 29 seconds, 54 seconds off. And he's gasping for air. He's really given that a terrific effort toward the mountain. A few deep breaths required to recover from that one, but he's still almost a minute slower. Alessandro man. Valverde looking good. Look at that big chest there working away those lungs. Uh, you know what? With a good ride here this afternoon, he actually could grasp himself the golden jersey because Roberto Harris, I don't think, is having a great day here on the slopes of this mountain. There's Santi Perez. He's just going to go under that barrier, which is going to indicate to around about three kilometers to go to the finish. Look at the way he's pedaling. He's out of the saddle, looking very comfortable, and uh, probably on a high after winning that stage yesterday into Granada. Well, he was six from the end out of the start house, six overall this morning, and he's a rider who doesn't seem to have lost anything, even though he made that huge effort yesterday to hold the field off, the chase group off, and win by 40-odd seconds. And here he is now beginning to throw another big spanner in the works and try and win the mountain time trial. Two stages back-to-back -back would be exceptional. I, don't, I really can't see it happening. But Vinokurov still the best time. And Carlos Garcia Casada here again is turning in a very, very good ride in the services of Valverde. A very good ride indeed. And that, I think, is Luis Perez just ahead of him. Well, that's a great ride. That's a second-place ride for Carlos Garcia. A so minute far. and 5.53. There's still a lot of fast riders to come. He was only 18 seconds, though, off the time of Alexander Vinokurov. Now, that's the closest we've seen so far to get near Alexander's time. But we know the midway points, it's going to be rocketed out of that first place very soon. Here is Mancebo. Riding right over to the left of the road here. And he is really going to go down fighting in this year's welter. He's been a real challenger, but he's had to struggle at times on the mountains. As he goes under the seven kilometers to go banner, he's still right up amongst it. Let's switch back to the finish. This is Santiago Perez. And this is going to be the time which will rock the boats. Look at that. 102 versus 105. Vinokulov has seen his time not bettered throughout the day but this man is going to blow it off the mountain this has been another superb performance it might be the winning time but we'll have to wait and see santiago perez the winner yesterday on top now 
one two twenty nine three minutes better than Vinokurov. that is a smashing of Vinokurov's time 28.4 kilometers an hour that is remarkable for a man who hadn't crossed the line in first place in a professional bike race until yesterday that is going to be a very difficult mark to beat I think uh, the young lady on the left is uh, Alessandro's girlfriend. There shouldn't be no better inspiration required than that to give him a good time today. He's going to have to work pretty hard because as he now looks as though he's going to challenge her all the way to Madrid for a podium, there's a new man getting in the way of things here now. And I don't think any of these riders before this race started would have rated Santiago Perez. Well, I tell you what, Roberto Heras, look at the face here, Phil. He is not having a great day, and that's a big surprise because this is a mountain time trial. He won the mountain time trial in the Vuelta a España last year, but he's actually losing huge chunks of time to Alejandro Valverde. This is Carlos Sastra, a very sensible time for him. He might just scrape inside of the top ten, but look at the time gap almost five minutes back to Santi Perez. Here is Alejandro Valverde, and for him, he could be in a position here to steal the golden jersey off Roberto Heras. Well, he's right up behind Sastra, and that is an extraordinary ride. He's been inspired. He looked a bit shaky when he left the start house for a couple of kilometers, but he certainly got better and better. But he's behind Perez by a minute and seven seconds, but he is best of the rest just for the moment. Valverde gets second. That's going to keep him right up there. Possibility, yes, of a golden jersey. Well, Heras has the answer to that. Well, Heras is actually under a lot of pressure. He was a long way behind at the individual checks, and uh, I got him around about 35 seconds down on Alejandro Valverde, and he didn't have very much in hand at the start of the day. You can see his face. He is not looking very comfortable at all. I think it's probably because this is not an ideal individual time trial to him. Here's Isidro Nazal, and he's lost a huge chunk of time. He was caught and passed by Alejandro Valverde. He's still going to make the top 10, but look at the time gaps in this individual time trial. Four and a half minutes. Well, there's the time of Alessandro Valverde. It's going to be really touch and go. We've no further checks on the whereabouts now of Roberto Heras. This is Mancebo still up amongst it, coming in with the fourth time. And he should hang on to that, but he'll have to be just quick now to get inside the time of Garcia. He, he'll do it. So he'll hold fourth for the moment. But three minutes 18, a massive time gain by Perez. Perez is going to be right in the frame now. He's got to be considered a man for the podium. Here comes Roberto Heras. It's desperately close, around about 1.425, and he'll be out of that yellow jersey. And he's not too far away from that. Look at his face. He knows he's close to losing it. And if it loses it, it will go to Valverde. So there's a serious effort required now because the clock is going to eliminate Roberto Heras if he doesn't find it. It's 4, 1, 4, 25, and he'll be out of it, and he's coming 1, 4, 20. That's five, five seconds. seconds. Unbelievable. He really pulled something out, but I don't think he could go any faster at all over that last kilometre. But a quick calculation is that he has just held onto the golden jersey for five seconds ahead of Alejandro Valverde. Back-to-back -back stage wins for Santiago Perez. The world is suddenly got a lovely hue to it. A road race victory on a mountain, now a time trial victory on a mountain. He is now a challenger for a podium place in Madrid. Just look at him enjoying the moment, and he's never known the moments of a winner before. There is the confirmation. Valverde has closed into five seconds. Everybody's Spanish in the top five, but Santiago Perez has climbed from the mid-teens to third overall in a matter of days. Absolutely remarkable, as well as Floyd Landis. Uh, he looked as if he was losing, losing huge chunks of time, but he's managed to keep up in seventh place in the overall classification. And finally, a smile appearing on the face here of Roberto Heras. Well, Eric Zabel is finding life a little bit easier now. 148 points in the points competition. The only sprinter left is Valverde. You've got to watch out for Heras, who will continue to score over the next few days in the points competition. Heras has got the lead, too, in the King of the Mountains uh, in first place here. As we now move on with the race and uh, looking now at stage at number... And I've lost the stage number. Stage number 16 for you now. 190.1 kilometers to Olaventa to Cathera. And this race now, not too bad for the riders, but a little bit rough towards the end. 
But the way these riders are going at each other every day and the way the body is responding quite differently every day, uh, Haras is no way certain yet of winning this welter. And the big challenge looks as though not only is it coming from Valverde, it's also coming now from Santiago Perez. Well, five seconds is not very much of an advantage at all for Roberto Heras, uh, but I think today it's a lot happier with this transitional stage. A small breakaway has managed to establish itself uh, over the main field. Just four kilometers left to go. The main contenders quite happy, I think, to give this breakaway some freedom this afternoon. They build themselves up uh, an advantage at one stage of uh, over 14 minutes, but currently the main field is around about 11 and a half minutes in arrears. And uh, do you remember Joshiba Balocchi who crashed out against Lance Armstrong last year in the Tour de France? Well, he's just abandoned the race here and we haven't seen a shot of him at all. So that's very sad. We can only hope that this year of consolidation to recover from his serious injuries means he might get back in amongst it next year because uh, we miss him in the mountains as a big challenger in the Grand Tours. But this breakaway seems to be the day today. The, I saw this route described as long and boring today hasn't been a lot of breaking scenery there will be a strange result because the breakaway doesn't affect the overall lead you always get one day like this in a major tour and you always get somebody who gets his first victory well that's uh, Valjevec there in third position for the Fonac team he's got a slight split over the front end of the main field Tony Cruz is in this break as well there you can just see his blue jersey a little bit further back there trying to pull himself back into contention here and a name that we haven't mentioned since the start of the Vuelta in fact is there in the red jersey Danilo De Luca I'd forgotten he was in the race well we've never seen him that's why but he's there now and he's the sort of man that could win this stage three kilometers to go Danilo De Luca had his ups and downs this year and his battles with officialdom but he's there tagged on to the back just by Antonio Cruz and there's an attack here, and that looks like Julia, I think it is. Well, Jose Julia, who's gone. And nobody re nobody reacted, and I think he may have gone here. Look at the gap he's opened up in the run to the finish. Well, he's never won a race as far as I know, as uh, Jose Julia has made his run for the line, and he may have made it at exactly the right time. Well, you're right. He's never won a race in his career so far. He turned professional back in 2002. And he has hit them at the right time, and I'm not sure exactly who is going to take up the pacemaking here. It really should be Danilo De Luca, because if it comes down to finishing it off, De Luca is the fastest man in the group. Absolutely. But he's had a very quiet Vuelta. Two kilometers to go, I think that banner said. That's Valjevec at the back. There's Tony Cruz trying to pull it all back together here. Keeps getting caught out at the back end of all of these splits, Tony Cruz as he slowly but surely pulls himself back up to the tail of that group. We are now looking at that group reforming, but here on the front, this man, Jose Julia, has got himself an advantage of around about 10 seconds. He could have made the move right here. Well, because of this breakaway going clear, hasn't affected the battle for the points jersey either. Eric Zalba can tick a day off. He might not be keen to have done that, actually, because this could have been a day he could have scored points. And now it's going to swing back to the Mountaineers as they get into that last kilometre now, thinking only of the finish. There's Valjevec on the front in the lime green shorts of Team Fonac. They are obviously on the crest of a wave right now with back-to-back -back wins by Santi Perez, who's pilled himself up to third place in the overall classification. But when you accelerate and slow down like this, it's not the way to try and pull back a last-minute attacker. You need a concerted effort, and that's why he's hit them right at the psychological moment when they're all thinking about trying to save a little bit of energy for the final sprint of the day. This man is giving everything just to stay off the front end of the group. And this is going to be an unexpected win for Kelme here. And Kelme, if this Pro Tour series comes off next year, and it's far from got the accord of many, many cycling nations or organisers, but if it is forced through by the UCI, which is their intention, then this team won't be taking part in those races and we won't be getting opportunities like this. That is the big problem, I think, Phil, about the big pro tour is that lots of these smaller teams like Team Kelmy are the aggressive teams in all of the Grand Tours. This man looking over his shoulder now knows he's got the win. First ever win of his professional career, which is still a young career, only three years into it. Well, now he has win number one. Once you get one on the board, then the rest seem to follow. But he's uh, well clear now. It'll be a battle for second place. And in fact, it won't be a battle for second place because that's Valjevec who stayed clear. He will get second, so the battle will come for third place. And it wouldn't surprise me if De Luca 
uh, finishes it off and he'll be very annoyed because he should have won this stage well that's the difficult thing when you're in a long breakaway like this at the end of it there's a lot of complications uh, there you can see Valjevic getting himself second place and it's a big gap now back to the rest of that group now there is De Luca in the red jersey and he's going to make it a long sprint but in fact somebody's just leapt off the front in front of him there and I think that is Lastras. Pablo Lastras yeah Lastras he's not a sprinter though here comes De Luca just took him in his slipstream and now he's gone for the line. He should have won this stage and I think he knows Tony Cruz trying to get on terms, but I don't think he, Tony's going to do it. No. On the line, Danilo De Luca takes it from Antonio Cruz and they're just on 45, 46 seconds there. But there's the winner, Jose Julia. And for the first time, really, uh, we call this uh, a slightly down stage because none of these riders affected the destiny of the golden jersey. The riders uh, in the pack recovering a little bit. Uh, we're receiving talk that there are as a gap of more than 11 minutes to the peloton So that's how serious they've taken this escape today Well, I think it's after very two hard days in the mountains the big contenders decided to take a back seat and just Try and recuperate a little bit and that's not really surprising because most of them had to really go for it yesterday In the individual time trial to the summit of the Sierra Nevada Which is why I think once this breakaway formed there was nobody of any danger at all in it They said well let it go and uh, basically all sorts of had an unofficial day off well they can't blame them really it's rather a pleasant day as well for a day off but for a professional bike rider you still have to ride the distance there's the stage result Pablo Lestas are completing the top five the peloton still meandering in behind our caption there and uh, a long long way down officially coming in 11 minutes plus behind and there's the stage winner no change in the overall either as the hills stay with us, it's a tough day tomorrow in the mountains, and that's why here they all come now and see if they confirm that 11 minutes deficit that we had out on the highway approaching the finish. No big effort at all. And uh, don't see Eric Zabel even getting involved in this, even for a couple of minor points for the competition. Oh, there's oh, Zabel. Ah, there he is. Yes, he's Just got with a the pink helmet on there. Yeah. Not very many riders left now for uh, try Team and Telecom, or no. Team Mobile, I should say. This looks like uh, Kevin Hulsman's coming up through the middle. Well, he better watch out here. Isn't that Pataki over to the left? Uh, no, that's uh, Marco Velo coming up there. Oh, so they're having a day off for the sprinters as well. And look at that gap. It was right. 11 minutes, 45 seconds. And uh, one of the slowest sprints so far as well. They're just 61 kilometers an hour. Be a slow sprint today as we move on now to stage 17 from Platencia to Atacion de Esqui La Covetia. 170 kilometers, the mountains are back with a vengeance. Two first category, the third category, which will take us on to the final outside category, the all category climb up to the finish at Cavatia. Now, I think Aras is going to worry now about the whereabouts of Juan Santiago Perez, and I wonder if the bigger man. Uh, Valverde can answer the two lighter climbers. We're going to find out now. This is a very, very tough day, and it's quite long too, 170 kilometres. Finishing in the ski resort of uh, La Covatia, and uh, certainly a very difficult finish for the riders in store. Fortunately, the weather in this part of Spain is absolutely glorious. They're making their way back up through the middle of the peninsula right now as they go over the Puerto de Honduras. There's a small breakaway just off the front end of the main field. This has been away virtually since the opening kilometers. Felix Cardenas won the climb of the Puerto de Pionel, and he's done it again here on the Honduras climb. He's still the El, Quero, El Cero to come and the climb to the finish. So these are the two first categories out of the way. The breakaway has been away almost from the opening kilometers, but I don't think, well, I don't know either, that they're going to stay away. Into the last 10 kilometers here now. This will take us right onto the slopes of the final climb. Felix Cardenas, number 41, and this is Oscar Sevilla at the back end of the group. He's uh, been on the ground on a number of occasions, but he is not having a very good Vuelta a España at all. And amongst the dropouts we're here, we've heard of today, interesting name is David Zabriski, who won that brilliant stage long breakaway. He's now decided to call it quits. He's gone home, he packed in today, and uh, the AG2R has lost another man there. Sprint has gone now, Eriki Putsep, and I think. That leaves only Inigo Charot left on the road for AG2R. The rest of the team are out. That's a very nasty situation to be in and a very costly situation for a team because they've still got all the management around and uh, probably most of the mechanics and the soigneurs will have gone home. 
front end of the field there you can see being controlled by the dark blue jerseys of Liberty Seguros it's going to be a very important race finish this afternoon for Roberto Heras he has to keep a very close eye on two riders Santi Perez and of course Alejandro Valverde Valverde is only five seconds in arrears and over the last couple of days really has started to turn out to be a very serious threat well he took that bad knock in the second week when he fell and he really thought he'd hurt himself he's come through it very very well indeed uh, but it may have cost him the race as we'll find out I think because you know he's, he's lost time when he may not have lost time and he's looking now at a mere five seconds he could have been in the golden jersey on the normal circumstance eight to go that's the big field up front is Felix Cardenas and uh, riding well he has ridden himself into this race despite his pre-race injuries Looks like Carlos Sastra going out on the attack. Yep. He's trying to put time between himself and the rest. He's a long way down in the overall classification, so I doubt if Roberto Heras will take up the pace pacemaking here. He started in sixth place at the start of this afternoon. It's a six minutes and 12 seconds in arrears, and they're not really chasing him. Well, Sastra's still there. Uh, I think the battle being that it's been quite a tough climb to the finish. These are the carrots which are getting away at the moment. The in battle will start soon. It's up to everybody to attack Heras. They've got to watch him. The time gaps are still small. Perez is up to third now, so he'll, he certainly won't be given any gifts anymore. Not that he, he took what he got, I know, but he'll be a marked man now. His number will be on the handlebars of Roberto Heras and Alejandro Valverde. Well, Sastra opening up the gap. And at the front here, that's uh, just on the top left-hand picture there. That is... I think Felix Cardenas taking off. It is there, you can see. Well, he's come back to the group and he's gone away again, but he's gone away again. This cafe back rider. He's collected a host of points today, and he is the defending king of the mountains. Heras has been up there as leader of that, but not wearing the jersey. But I really think now that this man could ride himself back into the jersey here. Well, let's not forget he won a, a mountain stage towards the end of the Vuelta a España last year to the summit of the Sierra Nevada. This year he didn't have a chance to do that because it was an individual time trial. But here he has definitely opened up his account in the King of the Mountains classification. The classification he might well have a chance of taking the lead off this afternoon. There chasing that small group of riders is Carlos Sastra and of course the group of the leader, the teammates of Roberto Harris all over the front end of the main field. Neutral service coming in, he must have got quite a gap all of a sudden here. Seven kilometers to go. Again, I don't think he's going to cause a reaction from the leaders who will start to shadow box amongst themselves. Eight kilometers for Sastra. This is an absolutely perfect day for bike racing, not a cloud in the sky. I've always enjoyed the Vuelta Espana, and I think the majority of the bike riders here do as well because of the weather conditions. The roads are superb in this part of Spain, and it is an ideal situation to use as preparation for the upcoming World Championships and, of course, all the one-day classics towards the end of the year, which I think is why there's a, a big host of Italian riders taking part in it. Yes, and normally about towards this at this stage of the Vuelta, we get dropouts because they're all thinking now, preparing for the World Championship. But this field is still pretty strong here. And uh, Cardenas, you can see his radio aerial sticking out of his back pocket. It keeps him in touch with uh, the car behind. 9% the gradient. He's still got a lot to do to keep it. He's done a wonderfully good day in the mountains. He's scored regularly on all of the climbs. And that could be enough. He needs to score on this last climb, though, if he's going to get the King of the Mountains lead. Look at this, Idro Nozal. I think he's about to pop there. You see, he was all over his machine. He's given everything over these last few days. Oh, that was a... Marco Serrano. That, that gave us just some idea of how steep these gradients are here. And this is incredible pacemaking. And that looks like uh, Perez from Cofidis has got himself up into second place. And Thabo also up here I haven't missed a beat these fellows yet it's Serrano this time taking the pacemaking there's Heras Heras looking very comfortable there's Alejandro Valverde right on his wheel the two riders only separated by five seconds Leonardo Pipoli and uh, this is Manuel Beltran going off the back here he's been riding high in the overall classification another man missing as well from that group is uh, Floyd Landis not very comfortable in fact there's a rumor emanating from US Postal Service uh, that he's actually had a, a little bit of a cold creeping in over the last few days and uh, I'd be very wouldn't be very surprised if he uh, didn't pull out of the race because he's gone from first spot and he's slowly but surely now starting to slip down the overall classification 
two minutes ten already and Saras and Serrano back in the pack there a little bit of a problem here at the back of the race too because this is Miguel Perdiguero who's having a very good season who's slipping away there oh, the pressure is on uh, looks like Carlos Sastre has been picked up by the rest of the group Francisco Jose Lara is on the front now but uh, let's not forget one man still leading this bike race a little bit further up Felix Cardenas he's no stranger to uphill wins in fact, he won a Pyrenean stage of the Tour de France a couple of years ago. But when the lights go out, this is what it looks like. This is Isidro Nozal, fifth overall at the start of today. I think the body's just saying, help, please let me have a day off. Well, he's done an amazing amount of work in the service of his team leader. He certainly has. Every day he gets up out of bed, he knows the pain he's going to go through. He knows what he has to do. He does it until he can't do it anymore. He's a great bike rider. But it's, the, it's in the Tour of Spain when we see him most. We don't talk about him anywhere else all year he rode the Tour de France you wouldn't have known uh, you wouldn't have known that at all in fact Liberty Seguros had a very anonymous Tour de France this year and uh, the whole team really seemed to crumble once Roberto Heras didn't rise to the occasion and become a major challenger to Lance Armstrong oh, Francisco Jose Lara is beginning to make a little bit of progress here Catanina, another one of the small teams that would miss out on the World Pro Tour and the European Pro Tour that's the other problem with the Pro Tour of course it's spitting the rest of the world away from Europe. Uh, Pipoli now, he's cracked at the back of the group. He's a long way down in the overall classifications, but he's got a stage victory to take away from the Vuelta a España. You can see the pressure that is being put on the yeah. front end of this main field. It's because of that incredible pacemaking again. It's the sort of pain the US Postal Boys inflicted on the rest of the race in the Tour de France. It's now reversed here. Floyd Landis is somewhere down the mountain. Cardenas here looks as though he's beginning to struggle. He should do. He's been virtually in control of this stage from the minute it started. He's had a good day out. Uh, but this is... Uh, the only good thing about this climb is it's got an excellent road surface, so it'll make it a little bit easier than if the road surface was broken up because that makes it stick to you. But here come the boys. Oh, and that's, uh, that's Lara we're just looking at there. Sorry. There's Valverde just riding in front of Roberto Heras, just behind him, Francisco Mancebo. Mm, Vinokurov tagged on. Tagged on the back, yes. Vinokurov rode a very good individual time trial up to the summit of Sierra Nevada, but right now he's probably riding himself uh, a little higher up in the overall classification. Heras keeping a very close eye on the man in front. That's his closest challenger. And I don't think Heras will be very keen to let Valverde out of his sight here this afternoon because the two men are only separated by five seconds. And with the acceleration that Alejandro Valverde's got at the top of a climb like this, he could very easily snatch back those five seconds. Well, it's absolutely nothing. And that's why uh, Roberto is sitting into the slipstream there of uh, Valverde to make sure he's around if he makes a move. And we'll hope he can follow him. At this stage of the year, you know, in mid-September, the gap is opening here. Harris, Harris has put the hammer down. He's decided now. A little now. bit of a surprise. Well, I think he's probably seen a little bit of weakness, uh, and in fact, he's opened up a gap there on Alejandro Valverde, yep. and it's up to the Spanish champion now to come up there and try and nail back that difference. He's been joined there by Santi Perez. Moving up into uh, second position behind Heras, and he's got the gap. Now he needs... I think the man he's really worried about, though, Phil, is Alejandro Valverde, because five seconds is really not very much at all. But just look at the face of Santiago Perez here. He's absolutely screwed up in agony, but this is a different man now. He's now learned to ride at the front with the stars after back-to-back -back stage wins in third overall. He could be challenging for second overall here because he's following the climber, Heras, and they have spotted Valverde was struggling. He has lost a big piece of ground here. This is, could be another great day for Perez. Well, they've just whizzed past Lara there. This is the group behind. This is Mancebo. There is Vinokurov. Oh, and look at the shoulders now of Valverde. They're all over his machine. He's just looking for a little bit more power to come up here from the engine room, and I don't think he can find it. Five seconds down at the start of the day, and he can't even stay on the wheel. He has pushed himself, Phil, over the last couple of days to stay in contact every time this race has gone uphill, but now he's lost the wheel of Mancebo, who in the past has been a serious ally for him. He's joined there by Luis Perez, and this could be the advantage for Roberto Heras. Heras, in fact, getting some help there from Santi Perez in the yeah. top right-hand corner, and let's not forget, we have still got a lone leader trying to get himself some glory this afternoon, Felix Cardenas top left hand side he's going the opposite way he's going the opposite <laughs> way I hope they don't crash when they go around the other side of this mountain 
Well, Cardenas could be taking the jersey off Perez, which is that uh, reddish colored jersey as King of the Mountains leader. He won that jersey last year. He scored plenty of points today to give him it. He needs to stay away for the finish, though, or get a good place. But I think he might get the stage win here, which would be a good result for his small team. But Perez knows now that by working here with Harass, he could find himself second overall. That surely it was an unthinkable position just 10 days ago. But now, because he was lying, I think, 4 minutes 45 behind in 13th, 14th place. Now he's challenging for second. He's moved up an awful long way in the last couple of days. This man's still not even worried about the overall classification. He hasn't had a victory so far this year, but in the Tour of Asturias early on in the year, he finished second in the overall standings. So Santi Perez there in second position, just content to sit on the wheel of Roberto Heras. He now is turning out to be Roberto Heras's closest challenger. 20 seconds separates the Heras Perez group from Valverde. But Valverde did not look like a man who was pedaling with the confidence that he had a couple of days ago, although he has recovered and moved up there to the wheel of Luis Perez. Well, it's an amazing thing here, but the Fonac rider Perez riding superbly, and this, don't forget, on a day when the race has heard about Tyler Hamilton and apparently he's been accused of blood doping by the Olympic Committee and also uh, from a positive test they've alleged he's given here after that mountain time trial win. Well, that's a story, of course, which will unfold, uh, but we're very distressed to hear that. Back with the race here, we're looking now at the leader, top left, Cadenas, the two chasers, Valverde in trouble, and on the right, a nice picture which would make a lovely jigsaw puzzle. Absolutely, see if you can put that one back together. And if you could put it back together, it would look something like this. Cardenas and one minute and 30 seconds back to these two riders. And I have a feeling that Cardenas is actually going to survive the day here this afternoon. Just slipping back there. One of the riders from Il Baleares who was in the break just a little bit earlier on. They're catching up riders who are in that early breakaway. Felix Cardenas uh, has still got a big advantage though, Phil, at a minute and 30 seconds. I don't think those two riders will see him again because Cardenas is a very good climber. That's Jorge Ferrio there, who's just uh, unhitched at the back of these boys. These are fighting for their lives now. Most important two men in the welter are up ahead of them. Valverde knows it only too well. He, he thought he was going to be the man to possibly win this welter. He's had to struggle. He got up to second. I think he's going to find himself back to third by the end of the day. Help there coming for Valverde from Carlos Garcia. Looking over his shoulder, trying to pace the team leader second in the overall classification. And I think the way this race is going here, he could very well be losing that. And the other Fonac man there, that was uh, Valjevic. He's had two good days after his breakaway for second place yesterday. He still found her legs today to be up amongst it, but now he's falling back a little bit. Look at that face here, Alessandro Valverde. Don't ever tell me that top professionals don't suffer just like normal human beings, just they get better results. They certainly do get better results, but this man is going through all kinds of pain while this man is just watching the kilometers tick by like they did 12 months ago when he won the stage at the top of the Sierra Nevada and went on to win the King of the Mountains classification, four kilometers to go. That uh, on gradients like this corresponds to around about eight and a half minutes of racing. There's still a long way to go, all uphill, of course, and Cardenas is hanging on well. We haven't had a time evaluation recently, but I think he's still well clear. Should take, away, uh, take the stage win. Heras uh, will be quite happy, the fact that he's with a man who's becoming his most dangerous rival here. There's the gap, 32 seconds between these two and the chase behind the Valverde which is where the interest lies for the golden jersey. Oh, Valverde is not looking good here at all. You see how, in fact, his teammate Garcia is having to slow down and wait for him to try and encourage him to find some kind of a rhythm. When you're not a great climber and you climb most of your career on courage, once the lights go out, it is very difficult to find a pace that is comfortable. This is Lara. There's a lot of battles going on here. Riders trying to stay up in the overall classification. But Valverde is having a very bad day. Yes. I think that about rounds it up. Everybody gets a bad day, they say, in a stage race. It, they just hope they can keep it a secret from everybody else. But on a mountain like this, I'm afraid you can't. Four kilometers to the top. The clock says a minute 16 in favor of the lone leader. Could be a great stage win coming the way then for Felix Cardenas. And which is amazing, really, considering his injuries in the crash just before this race began when he was training. But now he's back. 
Oh, look at that, 49 seconds. He's losing big chunks of time here. He was hoping, I think, this afternoon to try and get himself the jersey away from Roberto Heras, but you've got to be a special kind of bike rider to challenge Roberto Heras on the slopes of a mountain top finish. And I don't think Alejandro Valverde has got that in his legs here this afternoon. He can hardly follow his own teammate there, Carlos Garcia. Yep. Brave heart required now as you continue to climb towards the finish when you know you started the day five seconds behind the golden jersey with every pedal rev it's becoming now probably out to a minute. So Cardenas plowing a lonely furrow at the front end of the bike race, just watching those kilometers tick by slowly but surely. These guys here now have picked up Carlos Sastra at the back end of that group. He too is losing a little bit of time. Heras has got the support of the crowd. He's trying to make it two wins in a row and his third win at the Vuelta a España since he began riding it back in 1997 in a race which quite remarkably, Phil, he's never finished outside the top six. I think half of Spain have turned out here, found their way to the top of this mountain. I think they might have uh, suspected that after the mountain time trial, this would be the stage which would decide the destiny of the final golden jersey. But I think it's still in doubt here because we've got that last time trial and uh, the rider on the left of the picture, Perez, is still gaining ground here on everybody except Haras at the moment. There in the distance, another kilometre banner. It's a long way to the finish still, but I think now Cardenas can start to think of victory. Yep, Cardenas is still holding on to a very big chunk of his advantage over the chasers and it's interesting you pick up that final time trial for because Although it was in the final mountain time trial last year that Roberto Harris was able to wrest the lead away from his Idro Merzal, it was in the final time trial, a flat time trial a couple of years ago, that he actually lost the overall lead in the Vuelta a España to Aitor Gonzalez. That's right, this is amazing, but in the, the Tour of Spain especially, the time trial has played a hugely important role near the end of the race. It certainly has. Roberto Heras now getting some serious help here from Santi Perez. These two men are opening up a big chunk That's of big. time over Valverde. 57 seconds. It's almost the one-minute mark, and that will put Roberto Heras a minute and five seconds ahead of Valverde if we were to stop the race right now. But the way Valverde has blown, I think he might lose a serious chunk of time here this afternoon over the last couple of kilometers. Well, it's the first time we've seen him very transparent. He quite clearly is in trouble now. He knew he had to hang on today, and he wasn't able to do it. And Roberto Heras, how strange, he's found an ally in the man that has become stronger and stronger and stronger in the last five or six days. Still three kilometers to go here. It gets a little bit easier, but not at these speeds. I tell you what, it's not getting easier for Roberto Heras. You look at the way he's nodding the top half of his body around is not the same pedaling action he had a couple of days ago and in fact I think he is being put under pressure by the man in front of him Santi Perez who looks very comfortable and is taking advantage of the slightly easier gradient no let's not forget Roberto Heras likes the very very steep climbs this one which is being climbed with power is certainly not going to his advantage I couldn't agree more actually because although he is the golden jersey he's had to work for his right this time around he has been seen to struggle, but he's been a good leader, and he's relied heavily on one particular man, Isidro Nozal. Look at this gap now. This is based on the leader, don't forget, uh, not the two chasers, but it's going to go out to two minutes between the leader and Valverde. Valverde is just about getting up this mountain right now. That is really, really tough for him. He's going to have to have a couple of good days if he's going to come back into this because he's conceding second place overall. Just look how high this mountain has climbed from the plateau below. It's a remarkable country. Spain is such a magnificent backdrop for a bike race. And if you look down the mountain there, that's where these riders have had to drag their bodies over the last 25 minutes of climbing. Looking down there, that looks as if that's the group of uh, Alejandro Valverde. That's him. And 2.11 the gap, and the cars have been called around him. So now he knows he's slipping further and further back. He may not know exactly by how much, but this is an enormous gap. Well. Felix Cardenas uh, still holding on to a minute advantage over Roberto Heras, but there's a minute and ten seconds between Roberto Heras and the Grupo Valverde, which is certainly what he wants to do here this afternoon. He will not have felt very comfortable with Valverde breathing down his neck at just a five-second advantage. Santi Perez, two-stage wins uh, in the Vuelta a España, back-to-back, -back, one into Granada and one out of Granada on the way up to the summit of the Sierra Nevada. Now then. 
two kilometers to go now to the summit for these two riders. Seem to be getting a little bit of recovery now in the pedaling action of Roberto Heras, but he's going to have to keep a very close eye here on the man in front of him because Santi Perez is starting to look like a very serious challenger over the last couple of days. The win he had, I suppose, on the road into Granada could have been regarded as a fairly lucky win because nobody at that time regarded him as a serious challenger. But after dominating the individual time trial to Sierra Nevada, they have to take this man very seriously now, and I'm sure Roberto Heras has not misnoticed that. Well, he's a new boy suddenly blossomed as far as we're concerned. Now Cardenas here, he's not exactly a new boy. He's been a pro for five years. And in two months' time, he'll be 32 years of age. But he has won a stage of the Tour de France. He has won a couple of stages in the past of the Vuelta. And he has won the King of the Mountains. And by the time he wins this stage, he will be the leader again in the King of the Mountains competition. And he didn't expect that when he came to the race. Look at this, being pushed along here. Valverde has, as they say, violently hit the wall. He certainly has. In fact, he cannot even follow the wheel of his teammate there, Carlos Garcia, who has to keep slowing down to try and encourage his... What's this? Roberto Heras is... He's gone backwards. He's been dropped here. There's been an acceleration by Santi Perez, and Roberto Heras has been put into difficulty on the slopes of a climb now. This is a very rare happening. And this is a very, very good bike race right now because the golden jersey is not yet the final golden jersey, and... Uh, this rider, Santiago Perez, is riding out a dream here. Oh, Heras is having a hard time there, Phil. He put his head down, he was looking at his gears. That's a very big indication that you're not feeling good at all because every gear feels like the wrong gear. 1,000 metres left here for Felix Cardenas. He should take the overall victory here. Just two more minutes to ride to the summit, and he could be very close to getting himself the lead in the King of the Mountains classification. And it's been a great day of racing for him, one of those classic crossings of the mountains, the sort of sortie that Richard Baron could go on in the Tour de France. Baron, by the way, rumored to retire at the end of this season. And the gap, a minute 41 between Heras, and that's good news, of course, back to Valverde. Uh, but now Heras under pressure from the man who's just left him, and he's losing more seconds. He's nibbling away at the lead, this man. There's uh, Alexander Vinokurov in that group there with uh, Alejandro Valverde. This is the leader and probably the winner of the stage here this afternoon. But I think what's going to become a little bit more important, Phil, is the time gap now between Santi Perez and, of course, Roberto Heras, who looked like a very solid leader at the start of today. But now his foundations actually seem to be crumbling just a little bit. And the threat he ex expected from Alejandro Valverde didn't materialize, but he's got a new threat in the form of Santiago Perez as a phone app. Well, it is absolutely amazing today, but this is it as he comes up towards the line, salutes the crowd, a long escapade. He's the new leader in the King of the Mountains. He gets the stage win, and he's given the team a great big boost. It won't be a golden jersey, but you know, in the next few days, there could be a golden jersey for this rider. This has been another great day by Santiago Perez. Two wins, and now a second in the mountains. He is storming through these hills. He certainly is. Look at the acceleration. Look at the confidence this man has got over the last couple of days. He hasn't managed to pull himself back to get another stage victory, but he has taken second place. 29 seconds behind Felix Cardenas. Now let's check the clocks to the time. Back to Roberto Heras. For the first time since we went into the mountains, he really does seem to be under a little bit of pressure. Yes, well, Roberto Heras, Heras rather, if he does win this race, he's going to know he's been in a bike race. Last year, he came from behind, very confident. He could handle it all in the last time trial, which he did. This year, he's taken the lead early. He's only got one man really can help him in Isidro Nozal, but that's OK. He's still gaining on Valverde. Here comes Mancebo. He lost around about 30 seconds there on Santi Perez. Mancebo is going to come across the line to take himself fourth. He's lost a minute and 12 seconds, and he too will move just that little bit higher up in the overall classification. And uh, Santiago Perez uh, will make it uh, moving very closely up into second place. And we have to now see the time gap back to Alejandro Valverde, who's not had a very happy day out in the Vuelta España this afternoon. Well, it's been a very tough day, and he'd be glad to see the end of it. Luis Perez coming up here, the Cofredis climber. He must feel very lonely on this team when it comes to the mountain because nobody else climbs with him. 
No, they certainly don't. Uh, the next man we're expected to see come in has got to be, uh, at some time or another, this man in the white jersey here, Alejandro Valverde, still being paced there by his teammate, Carlos Garcia Quesada. In that group as well with him, Alexander Vinokurov, who was the rider who gave him a little bit of a push just a little earlier. That just uh, goes to show the uh, fraternity in the mountains. Uh, everybody knows what it's like to suffer, and nobody really wants to have to do it alone. Well, we're looking at serious time losses of Valverde now because he's still got about 900 meters to ride to the line here. It'll be over three minutes, surely, as he comes up and nothing in our sight now. Sastra coming through. Well, he actually recovered quite a bit because a little while ago he was in the company of Alejandro Valverde, so he's ridden himself back into the race. He should keep his sixth place that he started yesterday in the overall classification. But once again, losing big chunks of time to Roberto Heras. Well, the time has gone by, and uh, Santiago Perez is now up into second place in the Vuelta España. It is absolutely amazing, the progress of that rider. Here's Valverde, can't even take part in the sprint. He's just tacked on at the back of this group, and the clock is going to be three minutes and over because he's got to come over that little brow of the hill yet. He's got one faithful teammate with him. He's tried to talk him up the mountain, but Alejandro Valverde has had the day he won't want to know about, and he certainly won't want to know. He's three minutes, ten seconds down on the winner. Well, he was five seconds off the overall lead at the start of the day, and there he has lost a huge chunk of time. And let's not forget, despite the huge battle we've had on the slopes of this mountain, Felix Cardenas was the winner by 29 seconds at the end of the day ahead of Santiago Perez. But that ride, Phil, will drag him up as well into the lead in the King of the Mountains classification. And a nice uh, puff of fresh air there from Felix Cardenas. He gets the stage win. Roberto Heras, a minute 13 over Perez, 2.15 over Valverde. The gaps have opened, except Perez continues to annoy Roberto Heras. But at least his rivals are getting fewer. But he's still got to worry about that one man.